Well, shalom, everybody. Welcome to House to House Discipleship Institutes with your host, uh, Elder Robert Gonzalez, and your other um, Elder Joshua Malara. It's me. Just want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for so much for subscribing. Hit the share button. Hit the uh, subscribe button. Most importantly, for more terabyte, more content to come. And I just want to say this. Thank you so much because Yahuwah has uh, allowed us through his word to become threats, terrors, and revengers to the kingdom of darkness. Just like you are too, as you continue to view this uh, content of terabytes, and thank you, and as you continue to view more of the Sabbath services and the streams, you'll begin to see how Yahuwah is gonna unfold more of himself in you, and you're gonna be able to see more of him on a daily basis in his presence. But. This Saturday, I have an uh, announcement. This Saturday, we're actually going to be in Pomona in uh, in the House of Praise. And we just want to say that the address is 1149 North Gary Avenue in Pomona, California. Uh, you can go to our website, H2HDI, to take a look into the address. It's posted <clears throat> there. And we will be live uh, streaming there also for you to view it. So if you can't meet us there in person, there's a live stream for you to view uh, what the Father's going to be seeing on his day of rest. I mean, Amen. Amen. Well, tonight's uh, uh, topic, we're going to go and uh, begin in chapter 7 of Matthews. Uh, of course, some of you know, oh, chapter 7 of Matthews, that's wonderful. Um, and it is wonderful. 7 is the number of perfection in numerology. I don't really like to go over a lot of the numbers things because it, it really stems from the demonic realm. <clears throat> you know, if you stay within the confines of Scripture, then you're doing okay. You know, like 8's new beginning and 11 could be confusion and 12 could be government. <clears throat> you know, there, and, but you're not building a whole... Uh, message on the numbers and then you're using the value numbers which in the Hebrew the Aleph Tav there is value to every letter so here again for those that do I'm not against it I myself don't do it I try to stay within the uh, scripture uh, the <laughs> anyway context and pretext and all the other Post texts, texts and, to get the and see uh, those, those are terms that you you learn hermeneutically and homiletically and it what it does it keeps you if you start a theme you got to finish it within the same context okay and if you read scripture uh, you'll learn that that's how the scripture was uh, written and then it was canonized but this is where you got to really watch um, way back in the beginning in the garden we were taught that the enemy seduced Eve, and Eve in Scripture, the solical realm, the female gender, is the one that seeks after knowledge. The soul is full of uh, mind, will, and emotion, and if you don't have it uh, lined to and, and submitted to Scripture, you may get off into a rabbit's trail. Okay, so we know today, this is, I'm talking about right now, 2019, a lot of the ministry that has come to the community of the Father's family has been nothing but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But there is a generation that has not departed from Yahuwah, and they're actually restoring His name. And in doing so, that's where the mystery of the mystery, and it says in Ephesians, the mystery of Yah. Of course, King James uses the mystery of God. you got to fellowship the mystery. So some of you don't understand what that means, but it's there in the scripture. And this is why I want to go to Matthew, because Matthew is a type and shadow of the tabernacle of Moses in the Bret Hadashah. Verse 1, judge not that you be not judged. I don't have to go through that because by now, if you're following us here at House to House Discipleship Institute, you should know that you judge with righteous judgment. Okay, righteous judgment is because you sought after the kingdom, the sovereignty of your father. And in doing so, Matthew 6, uh, 33, I believe is, seek ye first the sovereignty of Yah 
and his righteousness. His righteousness is his son. That's why the father has a nature. I have I'm, I have a holy divine nature, but I have two lives, the life of Nefesh and the life of Suke. I am learning how to bring separation from my soulical Suke lifestyle to my living soul Nefesh lifestyle. So here verse 2 says, for with, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in your brother's eyes, but consider not the beam that is in your own eye? How will thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of your eye, and behold, the beam is still in my own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of your own eye, and then shall thou see clearly and cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and render you. Okay, now what's interesting, here he brings simple analogies on how to judge. There's a righteous way of judging, and then there's a negative way of judging. And if you understand that, then both you and the person, or vice versa, he and you, move into a dimension of righteousness because you're seeking first the kingdom of Yah, the sovereignty. When This is why it's so powerful. In John 8, it says that the father of lies was a father from the beginning. There's no truth in him, okay? And yet the father said, my word is truth. His word is truth. So even if he told a lie because he said it, it would be true. Do you see the difference? I'm not the word, but the word I'm striving to read and apply the word. So then, therefore, I'm, my measure of judgment is by how much word I'm walking out. I can fill my mind with a lot of knowledge of the word, but yet the Father only judges me by the amount of word that I'm walking out that has become true to you or true to me. Okay, let, let's go on. This is why I like that verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. What does he mean by that, mm. dogs? And then he said, I wouldn't give, and cast your pearls not to the swine. Why? Because they, they'll put it underfoot. Well, if you know what a pig does, a pig irritates. A pig actually rolls in its own mud, in its own oink. And it doesn't produce anything. It doesn't even have pores to sweat out of its glands. So it keeps all that, uh, someone said, I felt a disease and uncleanness within itself. And this is why we're told, don't eat swine. Okay, but we're learning how to become kosher and eat clean and 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 as you do then your judgment even becomes more pure okay because everything works in balance okay verse 7 ask and it shall be given <clears throat> seek and you shall find knock and it shall be open unto you every son listen closely every son that comes from the experience of the foot of the cross comes to the holy place and learns how to seek Yep, come on. Ask, seek, and knock. Why? Because in the outer court, you have to ask for forgiveness. Tashuva. You ask. And repentance is a good term. It should be a lifestyle for all of us. Uh, and it's a simple way of answering and a simple way of doing things. Okay? Verse 8. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it's open. He gives you the principle of all three courts. But because we don't understand that these three courts line up with Moses' tabernacle. Because the Father gave Moses by revelation the whole tabernacle teaching that if you and I would learn the old covenant... Then the revised covenant, the renewed covenant, the refreshed covenant, <laughs> the rearranged covenant would be alive and quickened in your personal life. Verse 9, Or what man is there of you whom if, if his son asks bread will give him a stone? 
which one of you are like that? If you're a father and you're even worldly fathers that use alcohol and drugs, you gave your son something. I, I would buy mine, you know, and there it is there. So let's go on. Or verse 10, or if he ask you for a fish, will you give him a serpent? If ye then being evil, know how good, how to give good gifts. You, you know that your children during Christmas, you give them gifts and the father hasn't killed you yet. But he doesn't want you to celebrate a pagan God that tries to a uh, fat jolly what we call Saint Nick. And he says, I have a list whether you're good or bad. See, that's all works. And yet the Father will give you life and life more abundantly. And you don't have to go to the <clears throat> pagan goddess of yeah, Saint Nick. Saint, Saint Tin. Saint Nickus. Nicodus. <laughs> Anyway, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So now that verse confuses me. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do even also to them. That's the law and the prophets. What did the prophets and the law speak about? How were they in scripture looked at to be profitable? The prophets spoke the purposes into your life. The law kept you on the purpose because you wouldn't waver left or right. You wouldn't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine because they had winds back then too. They even went through the Red Sea and the Red Sea had blood and water hmm. okay so you have to understand why you go through these things now verse 13 this is where I wanted to touch enter ye at the straight gate for wide is the gate that, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat now is he saying that there's many that goes in through the straight gate or the wide gate you have to choose what gate you're choosing now watch Many today are preaching portals. Oh, we found the portal of constants and if you're and variables. Well, you got to know portals are not in scripture. Here's the beginning of how you enter into a relationship with your heavenly Father. The first one's a gate, the second one's a door, and the third one's a window. Mm. There is three again, but you won't see that if you're constantly taught portals. Mm -hmm. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Uh oh. Now let me break it down. Few find it. Maybe you're one of a thousand among a thousand that is restoring his name. Maybe you're one of a thousand that's restoring his name and keeping the feast. Leviticus 23. His name, Yahuwah, yod Hey wah Hey. Why? Because that was back in the beginning. They started with that. Why not follow the whole story since it's his story on him anyway? Okay? And then it goes on, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Are you listening? So if you're partaking of the tree of the good and evil, the tree of good and evil, listen closely, you and I no longer do evil things, but we may do a lot of good. That's still one too many O's. If I was teaching you King James, I'd use the term God, G-O-D, God. But since I, I, I'm coming from the Hebrewic view, I use his true name, Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Okay, and you have to understand why, because when you enter the straight and narrow path, his name is one of the keys. His feast is another key. His uh -huh, new moons or high holy days, those are new moons. And then you got to go through the immersion, not immersion in water, but being fully immersed in the nature, character and function of the Ruach Kadosh. And till we see each other again, let me help you. 
Remember, the straight and narrow gate, not a straight and narrow portal. Please, I've seen them and I've heard them. They, 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 they're into all that now. Even uh, that, that group from Australia or wherever they're from, uh, they, they, they got everybody's ear in their worship. They have all kind of, they were just showing the new age and, and all the light shows and they got the, the satanic star and all kinds of stuff. And they were known for their worship. And now I don't know what's happening to them, but they opened a portal and they're reaching the X generation. And yet you and I, should take heed to what gate we walk through. Until we see each other again, Shalom.